Hello YouTubers. I think I've come to the end of my tests really. It seems to me that you guys aren't really that interested in the Sony Bloggy to be honest. Because I haven't really been getting a lot of views. I sort of expected it. Because it is an old piece of technology and there are cameras out there now that are as good if not better. So, you know, I, I decided what I'd do now is just do my final thoughts and sort of just leave it at that. As far as I'm concerned, I think I've pretty much done enough, to be honest. I thought the 1080p was slightly improved this time round. And the 720p 60 frames seem to be slightly better. Whether that's because I had the anti-flicker on or not, I don't know. Or the fact that I was sat in a car. Um, it, there were still a few shaky elements to it, but I did think it did. It was an improvement, I think. Good stuff, bad stuff. We'll start with the bad stuff first. The hunting issue. The fact that it sort of goes backwards and forwards in the background while I'm doing my video could be an issue for some of you guys. For me, it's not an issue because my face is still in focus, so it doesn't really bother me. One of the big things that I had an issue with was there's no, there was no clock in the dual display. So even though I could see myself recording, I didn't know how long I was recording for. Basically, I had to use a stopwatch in order to be able to see how long I'd recorded for. So there is a way around it. It, was just, it just would have been nice to be able to see how long I'd been recording for. Um, the software is very basic, no live feed record, the HDMI settings on the TV is basic and no AV cable. So if you haven't got a HD TV then you're restricted to watching it on your computer unless you burn it onto a CD. There's only 4 gig on board and there's no memory card slot. So if you take it on holiday you're going to have to take some form of like a laptop or something like that so that you can transfer the files over and continue to record. Um, plus you'll need all of the sort of extension leads and stuff to be able to charge it off the laptop. The other big gripe that I had, because of the iPhone effect, which basically is where you have the two dark lines down the side and the little bit in the middle, if you record you're doing it like that, that's what, that's what happens. So to get a full HD video, you've got to record it like that. Now, I'm holding it how I would naturally hold it, and as you can see, my finger is over half of the picture button. Now, one of the problems that I've had is that every now and then, I'll press that by mistake, and I'll take a picture which I hadn't planned on taking. In order to get around that, basically, I've got to hold it right at the edge, which obviously makes it unstable, and then I worry that I might drop it. Having that button that big, to me, just seems like a, a, a bit silly, to be honest. If it was me, I would have halved that button, and then you could have had enough room to hold it properly and not worry about dropping it. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've got this on, because I worry about dropping it, you see? Um, so that's the bad stuff. Now, the good stuff. I thought the zoom did pretty well. Okay, it's only four times digital, but I did think it did quite well. Um, the webcam was pretty good, at least as good as the DC1. The audio I thought was was pretty good, a little bit better than the DC one I thought. The close ups, I, I thought it did quite a good close up, considering that it doesn't have macro. I did think that it did do quite a good job, and when you combine that with the zoom, that did make quite a difference. The low light was okay, but vastly improved by the flash. I did like the flash. I thought the flash did quite a good job. And the fact that you can use a flash while you're recording as well. I thought that was brilliant. I tried the files in Windows Movie Maker for Windows 7. Sony Vegas Movie Studio and Sony Vegas Pro trial version. And Windows Movie Maker in XP. The only one it didn't work in was Movie Maker for XP. So if you've got XP and you've got Windows Movie Maker. You're going to have to get yourself either some editing software. Or some form of converter software. The 1080p is the same size as all the other resolutions, which is, pro is pretty much a standard nowadays. And the zoom worked in the 1080p as well, um, which again is pretty much standard, to be honest. So there you go. That's the good stuff and the bad stuff. So what do I think? I think, first of all, I will say what things I would change. I would get rid of that for a start. 
and have a USB socket. I would put a timer on the dual display. I would half that button. I would give it a removable battery and I'd give it a memory card slot. And I'd make it so that if you record like that, you get the same picture as if you record like that, which is the full HD picture. Um, and then that would be pretty much it, to be honest. It is a nice little camera. Um, for 40 quid, I think it's a major bargain. And I am really happy with it. I will be using it as my main vlogging camera because I think it does better audio and it's easier to set up. Now, I did go online to see how much the cheapest one was at the moment on eBay, and I found one for about $59.99, um, but that was a refurbished unit. I think the next price for a brand new one was about £100, I think. Then what I thought was, what about the DC-1? So I had a look for the DC-1, and the cheapest one I could find was about 80 quid for refurbished and again about a hundred pounds for a new one so they're sort of nearly the same if you want to buy a new one then they're about the same price I mean they are old technology the DC one is and the Sony bloggy is I do like it I think it's a bargain that I got one for 40 quid brand new in a box and you know I haven't seen a deal like that since um, and I am happy that I bought it and I will be using it quite a lot But I think if you were standing in a shop and you had 80 to 100 pounds and these two cameras were in front of you I think I would probably recommend the DC one over the um, Sony bloggy mainly because you get so much more with the DC one you know so many more features I think the main use for the Sony bloggy is as what it says as a blogging camera if you're somebody who just needs a basic camera to do video blogs um, and to be able to see yourself then I would say this Sony Bloggy Duo would be a good choice if you're somebody who needs it for holidays video in sports and sort of vlogging as well and product um, reviews and stuff like that then the DC1 or DC2 or any of the other cameras that are out, the new ones that are out, I think would be probably a better choice. Um, but then having said that, there are quite a few old ones that are going quite cheap nowadays. So I think it's just a case of sort of deciding what your criteria is and going and, and having a look to see which one best fits that criteria. I do like it. I think it is a nice little camera and the 720p does really well and the audio is really good. Um, so would I recommend it yeah I think I would but like I say it all depends on what your criteria is and what you want to use it for so there you go that is my final thoughts on the Sony Bloggy Duo I would recommend it but I'd also say if you want something that's more that you need more features with than the DC1 or DC2 from Panasonic would be um, a good choice as well hope you enjoyed this video hope you've enjoyed the test that I've done um, sorry it's a bit late <laughs> um, I don't really know what I'll be reviewing next I did have an idea to do a video about how to put playlists onto an Android phone because I've done that recently and it was a blinking nightmare trying to figure that one out so I thought I might do a tutorial to show you guys how to do it it is quite a long-winded way of doing it but it does work so we'll have to wait and see on that one okay that's enough for me hope you have a good evening bye bye for now